friends, welcome to this module on JSTL and expression language EL part 2. Fine. This is the part 2 of our modules on JSTL and expression language. Fine. In the last module, we had seen about expression language, it was mainly about expression language. Fine. Okay. So, yes, even we had explored what all things goes in a JSP. So, I will not repeat all those things. Yes, we understand what all things can go in a JS, uh, JSP. Fine. We have already seen about the custom tags. So, usage of tag, a tag library, how do we use a custom tag in our tag library, f uh, in our JSP. So, if I have to use tags from any tag library, how do we use it? And we have already seen about that. Fine. So, how, uh, how do we use a tag in a tag library? So, now here, if you want to start using JSTL, there are few things you should be having. You first download all the things related to JSTL. Okay. It includes, there are two actually standard jar files. There is a standard dot jar and JSTL dot jar. These you will need to keep them in your lib folder. There are those TLD files. Okay. There are actually, you know, the JSTL is mainly composed of four standard libraries. There are these four standard libraries available as part of what we call as JSTL. We have core tags, fine. Okay. It com covers most of the commonly used tags. Then we have the format tags, which use, which will cover about the formatting, fine. Uh, then we have the SQL tags, which is related to uh, database connection fine, getting things from a database and we have the XML tags, fine, which will be about parsing XML. Okay. So, those are the standard tag libraries, fine. What we concentrate here is, yes, mainly we will be looking at most of the things which are our custom tags and some of the tags which are from the, uh, from the format tags, fine, which are related to internationalization. And format tags, again, they would be related to internationalization, where you got some properties file and you would like to use those properties, which you have done, uh, where you have done that localization, fine. So, that is what we will be looking at here. Okay. So, yeah. So, how, how do we use them? Yes, we need those uh, TLD files also, not just those two jar files. We have the standard dot jar, we have the JSTL dot jar, those should be in the lib. Plus, we need to keep those four TLD files, C dot TLD, we have FMT dot TLD, we have got uh, uh, X, uh, X dot TLD and, and we have got X, S, uh, XML dot TLD and we have got the SQL dot TLD. Those are the TLD, four TLD files which will also be needed. Fine. So, those, those TLD files, you can keep them in some folder within your application fine. and then uh, 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 maybe under WebINF, you create a folder called TLD and keep all your TLD files over there. Fine. Now, how do we use that in our JSP? So, if I am trying to use any of the JSTL, maybe I am only using the core tags. Fine. So, uh, core tags and the format tags, let us say we use only these two of them. Fine. So, if we are using these, uh, our JSP initially should be mentioning okay, that yes, uh, we have that uh, uh, tag lib directive. So, we will say at the tag lib. So, this is something which will be compulsory fine. It is not JSTL is just available like a standard tag. So, we will have to say at the tag lib URI equal to maybe if you have kept it in web under web and uh, TLD folder you got your TLD file. Yes, you will say uh, uh, URI equal to in the bulk course you will say slash web INF slash UR uh, slash TLD slash C dot TLD and prefix equal to, we normally keep the prefix as C to indicate it is a core tag. You could have kept any other prefix, but then you, every place you would be following that same prefix. Now, the convention is to use C always for the prefix related to core tags. So, fine, we can use, uh, so let us keep that same standard, uh, fine, everyone is following that same convention. So, fine, so that is uh, one thing and same way you will also create one for format tag. So, you will have at the rate uh, tag lib URI equal to slash y f slash TLD slash FMT dot TLD fine and then the prefix for that could be FMT fine. So, we will keep FMT as the standard uh, which is the standard convention followed fine we will keep that only as the prefix fine. So, if first uh, first steps for a, within any JSP if you want to use JSTL fine in your application yes you should have included those jar files and the TLD files and use those at the rate the tag lib directive fine. So, having done that then, then how, how do we use them 
fine. So, let us look at each of the tags which is available, fine, we each of the uh, uh, most of the co uh, commonly used tags which are available to us, fine. So, here let us start with the common uh, most common tag, one of the tags okay, it may not be used so much now, because in an earlier uh, release of JSP, uh, expression language was allowed to a limited extent and you could not put them straight away. So, yes they could go as attributes fine, they could be going as values for the attributes. So, fine. So, one of the tags which was available for that purpose if you wanted to ex, uh, you know give output of any of the objects or anything fine, we have this tag called c colon out. So, we have c colon out the syntax would require, it would require a value to be specified, one of the attribute was value. So, you can say c colon out value equal to fine and then you give uh, uh, and in the value the double quotes for the value, the uh, value of the uh, value attribute would be in you can use an expression language there dollar braces and you put any object or whatever fine, the value you want fine. So, there you can use expression language and uh, so one of the co uh, compulsory attribute was value we have a few optional attributes, you can say default equal to and you can give some default value. So, in case this object which you are trying to show is empty, is not available, that object is not available, it can show the default value fine or and is plus one more thing, now the value which you are having within the value, if there are those special characters like ampersand or anything fine or do you want to show ampersand the output or the ampersand has its own meaning in the HTML fine. So, do we want to put the ampersand? So, that means, we would like to put that uh, uh, escape sequence for showing an ampersand or showing those special characters. So, for that we have another setting which is a boolean setting. So, we will say escape XML. So, you can say escape XML equal to other can say mention it as true or you may mention it as false and accordingly yes. So, you can put this fine. So, this is one syntax for c colon out. Another syntax for c colon out would be you can say c colon out do not put the value use the other two attributes and within c colon out and the slash c colon out you include whatever is the value to be included fine. So, that value goes straight away fine. So, so this is something which is available c colon out that is our first of the GSTL the core tags fine. Another tag fine which if you are following proper MVC pattern, we may not be using it, but still it is important to know about that fine. We have this tag called c colon set, the c colon set, set is for setting. You can use this to set the value of any of the beans, any Java bean property can be set. We can set the value in a map fine, okay fine or set the value for any particular attribute, we can change the value of an attribute also fine. So, c colon set fine, we have this c colon set and then we can specify value, what is the value to be set, we specify var equal to fine and we can specify the scope. So, this with c colon scap, if you say var equal to in that variable in a particular scope, if you do not specify scope, the default scope would be page scope. So, in that particular scope uh, object would be created if it is not there and it would be given that value fine. If you have that object already existing fine, on that object you can use c colon set to set the value of a property. So, for that another attribute called property may also be included, you can say property equal to this, value equal to this, property equal to this. The value and property fine can also be used fine and we have that where also fine, this can also be used for setting the value in a map fine. So, that is what the c colon set is fine, like c colon set fine, uh, we have another one, we have c colon remove fine, where you will only say where equal to fine. So, particular object can be uh, uh, attribute may also be removed or you can uh, fine, you can remove an attribute from a particular scope. You, uh, you have an option of specifying scope also fine. So, you can specify which scope from which scope this variable needs to be removed. So, c colon remove that is another tag which is available in our core tags fine. In core tags we have got core tags related to flow control also fine. We have a tag called c colon catch 
fine. We will say c colon catch, it is a it is a it is a tag with the body. So, you can say c colon catch and then put a, uh, a c colon catch we have uh, uh, where equal to optional part is where equal. You can have a variable as a fine, you give a variable name where equal to give some variable name. Okay, in double quote you give a variable name and then we have a body fine. The body is a full JSP fine, some JSP segment and we have a slash c colon catch. Now, the idea of the c colon catch is within this body of the JSP, if an exception occurs, okay, if an exception occurs, it is not going to come out. Okay, it is not going to come out. Instead, it will continue processing after the c colon catch. So, c colon catch is like okay, catch any exception if it occurs here and you can continue after that. Uh, fine. Another thing, the where which we have given is nothing but the where would be the variable, it would be an object which would be created and it would in turn contain the exception object if it is getting thrown within this catch. So, we have c colon catch and slash c colon catch within this body of the catch, if any exception gets thrown, that object is available with that variable and that is a, a, a use of the where, uh, where attribute in our c colon catch. Right? So, that is one thing. Now, coming to the uh, other kind of flow control which we have, we have got c colon if, oh c colon if we can specify test and you can say c colon if test and test would be a boolean expression fine test this and then we have a value fine c colon test okay we even have a optional attribute called where c colon test where fine one is you just have this without any body or you can have c colon test you have the where also which is optional and you have a body and then c colon if slash c colon if so if you use this kind of a tag Okay, fine. The test which is there, that test will be evaluated. Whatever we have specified test equal to, you give some expression there. That expression will be evaluated. The value of the expression would be evaluated to a boolean. It is true or false. If it happens to be a true one, fine. It will then execute. Then it will be evaluating the body of the if. If that test happens to be false, it won't evaluate and fine. It won't output the value of the uh, body, fine. Whatever is the body that goes should go for output. So that would not go for output if it evaluates to false. The other thing, when we said where equal to and scope, we can also specify scope. Whatever we give as where, that where will contain the true or false value which has been evaluated. So it's an option. If you want to keep the value in a variable, value of the test in a variable, that's where we give the where also. Fine. So we have got this c colon if. Okay. So that's a conditional. Another conditional one, okay. Another one which is a conditional is more like you know, uh, like we have you know various various parts like a switch case kind of a thing, okay, okay. So something on those lines, we have something called c colon choose. So you can say c colon choose and slash c colon choose. Within c colon choose and slash c colon choose, fine. We can say c colon when. And here you give a so with the entire c colon choose and slash c colon choose is broken into smaller smaller parts. Each of those parts can be a c colon when c colon when c colon when. Fine. Each one in the c colon when a test has been specified. Okay. So uh, when it if, when it comes to c colon choose, fine. It will evaluate the test in each of those c colon when for whichever test for whichever c colon when the test evaluates to true, that part would be included in the output. Okay. So, we have c colon when and we have a test equal to and there will be a slash c colon when before it starts with the new c colon when. Okay. Uh, along with the c colon when at the end of all these c colon when, you can also add a c colon otherwise fine, and slash c colon otherwise. It is an optional one. Fine. You may have, you may not be having. So, if you got c colon otherwise, what would happen is, if it evaluates to all of those tests and if it has failed in all the earlier c colon when, the, all, uh, the test for all the earlier c colon when, then the c colon otherwise is going to be used and that is what is going to be picked up for output. Fine. So, that is what we have as a c colon chess, uh, choose, it is more like a switch case kind of thing, Fine. Uh, pick up one of those c colon choose or else it goes to the c colon whatever is the in the otherwise. 
fine. So, that is another conditional one, fine, another one which we have are the, uh, so these are the conditional ones, but then we also have something which are the loop, fine. You got a map, you got an array or you got you know different kinds of things which are iterable and you would like to evaluate each of those based on you want to loop, you want to loop over things, fine. So, you have a body for which, for which you would like to loop. So, for that we got two different tags, fine, there is a tag called c colon for each, okay. There is one called c colon for each, fine and another is c colon for tokens. In the c colon for each, we have attributes called items. Now, what you give as items is some object an expression, okay, which means which is some object which could be of type array, it could be of type list it could be of type set, it could be a collection fine or it could be a map also fine. Any such thing could be used in uh, or it could be an enumeration, any iteration fine, anything which is iterable fine, uh, fine for which there are multiple things that could be used in C colon uh, in the items attribute. So, items attribute is for giving that and then we have a where equal to. Now, the where here is the local variable fine which is within the c colon for each and the slash c colon for each, this variable will contain the current value from that items. So, items is one fine, uh, maybe you have chosen to uh, some map to be there. In case you are choosing a map, the uh, where would be containing the map entry, the map dot entry. So, the key value pair that would be available in the where fine. And uh, so you can use where, as fine. Where would be all, uh, fine. Where is something which you can use. Another thing probably you might be using is you may not use items. Okay, or even with items, even in spite of items, there are other optional attributes here. You have an attribute called first. Fine. Uh, sorry, you have an attribute called begin. You have an attribute called end, and you have an attribute called step. Fine. So uh, this begin, end, and step begin is for giving us out of those items fine we have a uh, fine uh, those sequence of items out of those items which uh, from which position should i begin fine it may be more applicable to an array or to a list something which is having a which is ordered fine so we can give the beginning point fine beginning index we can give the end index uh, don't go beyond this index and we can even give the step size by default step would be 1 Fine. So, that is another option which we have. Okay. Now, uh, along with this, there is still one more uh, optional attribute called where status. Where status is one more, it is an object which has its own properties. It has properties like begin, end you know, to know that yes, this is actually the beginning row, this is the end row, fine. something like that. Oh, am I at the beginning row or to know the number, you can okay, which is the current number, fine, the index number which there it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, what is the position? So, to know the current position, so you have various at, uh, various properties in the where status. So, where status dot begin is a boolean, where status dot end is a boolean to know whether it is a beginning one or it is an end one, fine and where status dot number. So, that would tell us number 1, 2, 3, 4 like that or where status dot index. So, that will give us the index as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that is another thing which we can have. So, another thing you this is one syntax where we use in uh, items. In the other syntax, we may not be using items, you can just straight away in the, uh, if you are not using items in that case begin end would be compulsory fine. You can optionally give a step fine and again we still have the where and the where status. So, where would contain the integer uh, the integer value. So, you can have some integer values here, right. So, in uh, when you say begin end and you are not giving items, those are integer types then, fine. So, that is another option which we have for using the for each. So, for each can be used for iterations, fine. And then we have the after the for each, the next one is the for tokens. In the for tokens, fine, we can specify items, the items here can be a string. Fine. Uh, fine. Uh, see the I, in the earlier syntax also in the for each also items could be a string, in which case the variable would get the character individual characters from the string. It's again string is you know something. It's made up of a sequence of 
characters. So, that way characters would be available even with for each, but here what we have is for tokens. In case of for tokens, we give item which should be a string fine and then we will say, uh, we will say delimiters, delims. So, we will say delimiters and we specify a delimiter. So, whatever is the string, it would use this uh, delimiters to break it into smaller part and then we have those attribute called where equal to. So, the variable where would uh, be used for making available that specific token. So, tokens are broken out from that item by using the delimiters and makes it available to you within the for token style with the help of the variable. So, you can use this in case you have some delimited set very commonly maybe you have, you have read something which is comma separated fine there is something uh, there is some uh, object in which you have a set of lines which are comma separated values. So, when there are comma separated values and you want to find each of those values you can use the delimiters as comma and break it into smaller parts and iterate over each and every item in that line fine. So, that is one kind of a thing which we can use here fine. So, we have the for tokens fine. Uh, now, we have some more uh, core tags fine, we got some core tags for c colon import. Now, these core tags are related to uh, using the URLs fine, accessing other URLs, other uh, resources. Okay. So, uh, one is maybe you are interested in redirecting fine, if you are interested in redirection fine, uh, we, we know uh, uh, we can use those, we have that uh, uh, standard uh, tag also for redirection, but then that redirection fine which we had available even in a servlet when we say redirection fine, we can redirect right. So, now here redirection would be available even within your application itself fine, you can redirect to anything. So, you can say c colon redirect and you have to specify URL equal to and give a URL to which you can be redirected. So, this uh, one called c colon redirect. You have c colon import or c colon import, it is for including the text, uh, including the content from a given URL. So, you will specify URL equal to fine, you will specify the URL, you will specify the where, where. Now, if you here if you specify where, that where would get the value of the content, the entire content as a string can be made available to a where. Fine. So, you can use that c colon import to actually read the content from another place and make it available in a variable fine and uh, maybe or you can even include it in your content in the current content pick up the content of another place. Now, this is allow, this is giving you full access in the sense that you can give any URL fine your URL can be out of the uh, it need not be within your web application it can go outside the web application, go, go even outside the server fine to any any particular thing. So, that way it is much more powerful than something like a uh, request dispatcher dot in, uh, include, because request dispatcher include works only within your current application fine, it is within the context not outside the context. So, this one is global fine, okay. so that is a c colon import. Okay, then we have these uh, tags which are for uh, this is another one which is for uh, you know you, uh, you, uh, when you have cook uh, you know uh, when we have uh, session uh, uh, session tracking to be done session tracking we understand normally done by using cookies cookies are very commonly used for session tracking but instead of using cookies fine sometimes some servers may say no we do not use cookies we will be following URL rewriting. Now, if there is a URL rewriting oh it involves a lot of effort here fine to rewrite each and every place where we have a URL. So, here wherever you have a URL okay, which is within your application you would like to have the uh, you will like to have the session ID being included fine that means you have to do your uh, URL rewriting. Now, if you have to do a URL rewriting, how do I generate a, that uh, uh, rewritten URL and for that we have a c colon URL tag fine, just have to include that c colon URL fine, specify the value, uh, specify the URL which is your local URL fine 
and to that local URL, it would automatically append the uh, rewriting of that URL would be done for us by this particular tag. So, fine. So, this is something which we have uh, as part of the core tag. So, these are the commonly used core tags, okay. other than the core tags coming to the next category of tags. The next category is the format tags. Okay. In this format tags here, we are going to be looking only at the internationalization related tags. Fine. We will not cover all the tags here. Fine. So, internationalization related tags, recollect in internationalization what do we have? We have a locale class. Fine. So, we got a tag called c colon set locale, uh, not c, oh this is not c, it is not a core tag, it is a format tag. So, one thing compulsory here would be, you will need in your GSP, if you want to use these tags, you will need to include the tag lib for FMT, okay. FMT TLD has to be included and for this format tag, fine, uh, we have, so we have this tag called set locale, fine. So, we will say FMT colon set locale, fine, it will be FMT colon, not C colon, now, now we are saying format, format tags are always. Uh, normally we prefix with FMT. So, FMT colon set locale and then we will say value equal to. Now, value equal to here should be the value object of a locale type. You can give a string also fine. For example, you uh, un underscore en underscore us English u in us fine that is an example or here what is also allowed is you can use instead of underscore you may even use a hyphen even that is also allowed here. So, fine that is another way fine. So, of specifying a locale. So, locale also can be specified here as a text. We have another attribute an optional attribute called variant. So, you can say variant equal to and give a variant I, I, I have a, a variant also added to it fine. So, that is another thing which you can add here fine. So, we have FMT type. So, it is like this. So, in this GSP throughout this GSP this is my setting for locale. So, you are specifying a locale here, fine, you are able to specify a locale. Maybe you would like to use the preference of the user's preference for the locale. Now, how do I include the, uh, how do I specify the user's preference for the locale? So, for that I will say uh, FMT colon set locale value equal to dollar braces. Oh, where do you find the user's preference of locale? Oh, that is in the request, fine. So, request dot get locale. So, instead of that dollar braces, fine, we will have request, uh, uh, how do I get the request object? It is from the page context. So, page context dot request dot locale. So, that would work for giving me the current uh, user's preference about the locale. So, I can that is one very good, uh, uh, good thing to set. So, you are setting whatever is the uh, browser, uh, the client's preference for local that can be easily be set, but you could set it to any other value specific value also fine. So, that is also possible okay, fine and then we have another uh, fine. So, this is one. So, you do this setting first and then oh I am interested in using actually the uh, I am also uh, I am interested in using a particular resource bundle fine. So, you will have FMT colon set bundle fine. So, set bundle is the one which would then set fine, where we will say value equal to and we will specify the name of a resource bundle, fine. So, we have the base name basically, sorry, uh, I think it is base, uh, base name equal to, it is not value equal to, here we will say base name equal to. So, FMT colon uh, set bundle base name equal to the name of a resource bundle, fine, the base name for the resource bundle, fine and that can be specified. So, that way you specify your res which resource bundle should be used because already we have a setting for locale. So, for that locale it will for the for that current whatever is your current setting for the locale it will be fetching the resource bundle and then we have the other one called FMT colon message fine. So, when we say FMT colon message we can say uh, property equal to and will give the name of a property or name of one of those uh, resource names fine. Uh, which we have specified in the properties fine the key part and for uh, using that we should be able to fetch any of the uh, any of the properties into our. Uh, so, 
property for the current uh, which is best according to the current local that can be fetched uh, for us by the uh, by using this kind of attack. Now, you, you may have you know some place you may have a requirement no uh, I want uh, f uh, for a particular part of the body uh, fine when I say C colon set, uh, set locale it is the locale setting for the entire thing, but for a sm or uh, even when I say C colon set bundle I am setting the resource bundle for the entire JSP page from that point onwards, but then I might be interested no, no not for the entire page, but for a small segment I want to use a particular different resource bundle fine. So, uh, if you want to have a uh, maybe in a small part we would like to use a different uh, resource bundle fine. So, in order to use that different resource bundle we even have a uh, FMT colon bundle fine. So, FMT colon bundle would be used with a body. So, we will say FMT colon bundle and slash FMT colon bundle. Within this FMT colon bundle and slash FMT colon bundle, we may be using that FMT colon message, fine, where we will uh, uh, find where we are able to specify key equal to, fine. So, FMT colon message and when we say key equal, we are actually giving a key to the uh, to a property and we are getting the corresponding property here. Fine. Another thing, uh, we might sometimes have that formatted message, fine, message format class of uh, Java dot text package, if that is being used, we understand that can have parameters, fine. So, if you want to pass parameters to that, our FMT colon message can include a inner tag called param, fine, where we will say FMT colon param, name equal to and value equal to, fine, that is something which can be used here, fine. So, that is what we have in the format tags fine uh, the format tags related to internationalization fine. So, you can use C FMT colon uh, set locale fine we have FMT colon set bundle and for a smaller segment we can say FMT colon bundle and slash FMT colon bundle within which you may be uh, fine and as far as FMT colon message is concerned yes it can be used anywhere fine and when we say FMT colon message it is going to use for the current resource bundle which it got selected because of the FMT colon set bundle or it may be FMT colon bundle either of them fine which are if it is FMT it is inside FMT colon bundle that would be take precedence fine otherwise whatever is the setting of FMT colon set bundle that would be used fine and that way we can include things which are from a resource bundle. So, if we have a web application, we are uh, writing a web application, we have gone for internationalization, we have done the localization job, fine, we got resource bundles for it, we should be able to use them in our JSP page quite easily, fine. So, that is what we have in this module. Thank you, 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 Diol. 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 Thank you, Diol.
Thank you, Dior. 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 Hello friends, welcome to this module on developing custom tags. Right? In the last module, we had seen, we had looked at the standard tags which are available for use in a JSP. Fine. So, those standard tags we had used with something like uh, JSP colon and we had JSP colon use bean, there were bean tags, there were tags for the uh, Fine. Uh, for uh, we had tags for uh, app including an applet. Fine. So we had various. Uh, there are there are these ready-made uh, standard tags which are available for use in any JSP. So to include any of those standard tags, we simply say JSP colon and there is some tag name and then we have some attributes and some of uh, fine and then we have uh, fine. And we can so that way we could be including we could be using any kind of those standard tags. Fine, we have fine. We have various categories of those standard tags. Now, uh, other than these standard tags, okay, there is also a possibility of a Java programmer creating certain more tags of his own and using them within a JSP page. So, in a JSP page, it is not only that you will be able to use those standard tags only, whatever is provided. You can include other tags like we have programmers whose only job is to just develop, they may be just be interested in creating various good tags and uh, which are more general purpose tags and creating them in the form of a library and distributing it for use by others. Fine. So, we got something called tag library. 
uh, there is a library of tags, someone could create a full library of tags and then this library fine could be included in any JSP. Uh, so, a JSP fine in a JSP what can be used? Oh, uh, fine we had seen so many times uh, we uh, use a, in JSP we use everything like uh, which whatever is HTML, we can use uh, expressions, scriptlets fine we have th seen those scripting elements, we have also seen we can use directives, we can have uh, oh, we, ha we have directives. Yeah, one of those directives we have seen the page directive earlier. We have uh, one of the directives was the taglib directive. We could say at the rate taglib and recollect in at the rate taglib what we can do. Or we can say at the rate taglib, we are supposed to there are two attributes there. One attribute is uri equal to and you give some uri. Oh, what is that uri for? Uh, that uri is for a tld file. What is tld? TLD is tag library descriptor, fine. And then the other attribute which says prefix equal to and we give some kind of a prefix. Of course, here there is some restriction on the prefix. The prefix cannot be saying JSP, because when we use standard tags that prefix is JSP. So, JSP there are certain things which are reserved and cannot be used as prefix in our taglib directive. When we say taglib, the prefix value cannot be JSP, JSPX, it cannot be Java or Java X, fine. You can have any other things, fine. So, you have prefix. The idea here is whenever I, uh, when I am saying at the rate tag lib, I am saying in my in this particular JSP, I would like to be using all those tags which are available or which are declared in this particular TLD file. We have a TLD file, a tag library descriptor. A TLD file is an XML file. In this XML file, we got tag, uh, we got the taglib slash taglib and within that we have got tags, fine. We declare, oh, we, I, I got so and so tag. We give a name to the tag and as associate this name with a particular class. So, we have a class corresponding to each tag which has been developed. So, a tag developer fine we have a tag developer so the tag developer defines certain classes and also creates a tld file which associates this gives a name to this uh, to the tag which is defined using a java class so we have a java class which is used for a defining a tag fine we, our, so this module mainly will concentrate on looking at how do we define this kind of a tag classes, how, what are these kind of, how do we define these tag classes and a little bit about okay, how to create a TLD file, fine. So, anyway we will have one demonstration also later, which will demonstrate how to create a tag, uh, a TLD file and how to create custom tag, which can then be used in a JSP file. So, we will have a, a later module will be used for giving a demonstration on that. Fine. Uh, so, in this, uh, so let us continue with looking at. Uh, so, one thing was we had used the taglib directive. So, we use taglib directive in a JSP and say, okay, this is the TLD file. That TLD file says there is a name there, fine. It uh, associates a name with our tags for our tags. So, whenever we want to use any tag which is available in that TLD, we will be using that prefix colon and the name which appears in the TLD, fine. Now, coming to what are tags, okay. What do, what does a tag have? A tag has, so a standard any, if you look at tag, these are all valid XML tags, fine. They have to follow the hierarchical structure of XML. So, so they always have like, we have a parent tag, there is a child tag. So, it is always uh, in XML, it is a hierarchical, right. So, all, any tag may have a parent tag, fine. And tags also have attributes, fine. So, attribute will have a name. So, whenever we use a tag, we will say tag uh, prefix colon tag name. Then we might be using attribute, if, if whatever is attribute is allowed for a, for this tag equal to and then we have to give a value for the attribute which may be in single quote or may be in double quote. So, we have such attributes and then we may have a body for the tag and after the, the body of the tag, you may have the end of a tag. And of course, you may have tags which do not allow a body, fine. So, let us see, we were, so we are interested in 
someone defining such kind of so there is a tag developer so we are looking at this from the point of view of a tag developer what does a tag developer have to do here okay so from the tag developer's point of view yes if someone wants to develop tags he will have to define certain classes okay we have uh, we have now in our api there's one more api which is related to jsp like we have a servlet related api we have a jsp api fine the jsp api has a package called javax.servlet.jsp.tagext tag extension think of it as tag extension and this tag extension has got certain interfaces there are three common uh, they, there are three good interfaces for creating three different kinds of tags we have one kind of a tag fine which is a simple tag we normally use it for a tag which does not have any kind of a body fine if there's a tag simple tag it may have attributes but maybe it may not have any body fine so we might be using a very simple kind of a tag okay so and then we have uh, another kind of a uh, kind of a tag which we go further it is known as a uh, iteration tag so we have a iteration tag which extends from the tag okay so it has a few more things fine uh, uh, this iteration tag has a ability where uh, it can you may uh, you may use a iteration tag where normally we have some kind of a body now you may like to you know uh, repeat it repeat the body in the output again and again till certain condition is met which may be decided by the tag only okay so we have tag called iteration tag and then we have a body tag where the it, it's uh, it's again an extension of the iteration tag so it has the ability of a loop looping over the body content but the idea here is in uh, in the body tag the idea here is the content which is the cont the body the body part the body content which is part of uh, within the start and end of a tag that body content is made available to the tag and the tag uh, it is the tag which decides how to use it there's a buffer created through which the the body content would be made available it's pushed into a buffer which is accessible uh, directly to the tag fine the iteration tag does not process a body the iteration tag only says i want the body to be processed by the jsp engine it's not that the js the tag is getting hold of the content so that's a difference there fine so we have these three kinds of tag let's uh, uh, let's look at each of those tags here uh, each of these tags are you, when you include a tag uh, within when you make a, a tag entry within any jsp there is a life cycle for this tag object within the jsp page itself so we have a life cycle of a jsp page uh, of a tag which goes as part of the tag are part of a jsp page so let's start by looking at a simple life cycle for a simple js a uh, simple tag so if you define a class by extending from the tag interface you have to uh, sorry by implementing the tag interface you have to impl implement these kind of tags depending on what kind of tag you want so normally if you have a empty tag you may extend from uh, you may be implementing the tag interface so let's look at what methods and how they get invoked okay so the first method in this case as soon as uh, as soon as that page is jsp page is going to be loaded fine it would be invoking a method on the uh, tag which is embedded here it would invoke the method called set page context recollect page context it's the object which contains all the other implicit objects the idea here is all implicit objects to be made available to the uh, to the tag object fine so within the tag you the tag developer now gets hold of the current objects the current implicit objects all implicit objects will be available for example oh from this tag from this custom tag uh, from the custom tag the, from the tag object the tag developer wants to put some output oh he has the out object available to him if he wants to read some parameter from the request oh here is the request object available from the page context so the idea is to push the page context object into the tag object the tag component it's a tag component which the tag developer is creating so that one gets the first life cycle method you can say is set page context where page context is given the next thing the tag is given the tag has a method called set parent 
where the parent tag, remember it is a hierarchy, right. So, tags have a hierarchy. So, if there is a hierarchy, if there is a parent tag to this, set parent would be invoked and the parent tag object would be made available to this tag, okay. Now, one more thing here, there is an additional method in the interface called get parent. So, the idea here is, so the implementation of set parent should actually store this in some instance variable. You must have a, uh, so when you write your implementation, you must keep a, uh, you must keep a instance variable to store your parent tag object and your get parent method must be implemented in that way. So, life cycle point of view, yes, we have the set uh, page context followed by set parent. Now, the next thing what is happening is, it is looking at your tag, okay. In this tag, you got your attributes, fine. You got some attributes there. So, you got attribute name 1 equals some attribute value, your second attribute name equal to the attribute values, fine. The way the, pay, uh, the web page developer has used this, fine, he would have used some attributes for a tag when he is using a particular tag. So, when he uses these attributes, the values for these attributes have to be given to this component and for that, the tag developer has to have the setter methods corresponding to attributes. For example, maybe you have a directive to put the current date and time. So, you might have a, uh, so, sorry, you develop a tag to current, put the current date and time. Maybe you call the tag as uh, now. So, maybe you create a, a class called now tag, which implements the tag interface. You would have those three uh, methods, but now maybe you would like to have the formatting, the date time formatting to be specified, right, as an attribute. You may have a default, so maybe you do not keep it as an, a compulsory attribute, compulsory attribute, but you have an attribute called format. So, if you are allowing an attribute called format, your class, the tag class must have a method called set format. The parameter to this, so we have the parameter to this in this case can be a, should be a string. What is allowed here is, there is an implicit conversion from string to the primitive types available to us. And therefore, uh, when you define the setter method, the idea is to have setter methods for all the attributes. So, if you are having any tag, fine, and you know this, uh, you, uh, when you are de designing your tag, you have already decided on attribute names. So, whatever attribute names you have for each attribute, you must have a setter method. So, set and attribute name, fine, and the parameter to this can be any of the primitive type or it can be a string, fine. It depends on how you, how you have designed your tag. So, what is the need of that particular attribute, fine. So, you got, so uh, from the life cycle point of view, first invocation of set page context, next was set parent, okay. Next is the invocation of the setter methods for the attributes. Once the setter methods for the attributes is over, Fine. So, that means, the page, uh, the tag component is, has been told these are the attributes which the page design, which the web page designer has set for you, okay. Next would be the indication, next it is saying, okay, now you tell me, okay, it is, uh, the next the, the, the engine invokes the method called do start tag. It does not have any parameters, do start tag without parameters, but it has a return type called int. The return value here is going to decide whether the body content is going to be processed or not. It has to be evaluated or not by the page, page engine, fine. So, JSP engine, should it be evaluating the body content or not? That will be decided depending on the return value of the do start tag, okay. So, the engine is saying, okay, now you do the start tag, do the things which you would do I have already set the attributes, now you do the next thing, uh, now I am asking you to uh, do this, uh, do some activity in the do start tag. So, you have the do start tag, the return value here can be, uh, so we have uh, static constants in, a, in our tag interface. We have a constant called uh, skip body or eval body include. So, you may be returning one of those two values here in the do start tag. Okay. So, it will, if it, uh, so normally if it is a empty tag, fine, which does not have a body, then it should be returning skip body. If it has a body and the tag decides that yes, the body needs to be evaluated, fine, it should say eval body include, fine. Once this is done, once a do start tag has returned 
and if it is if uh, skip body it will straight away go and jump to invoking the next method which is do and tag. If it had returned eval body include it will include the body content fine if it, it will evaluate the body content and then it will be invoking the do and tag. Again now this do and tag the tag is again given another control whether to decide whether the rest of the page needs to be skipped or I need to proceed further. So, it you can uh, you can return any of the two values called skip page. So, we have a uh, constant called skip page which can be returned here or you might be returning eval page. So, you have skip page eval page those are the two constants available here fine. So, this is uh, this is what is happening and then so uh, normally you may be saying eval page fine and then it will proceed further and uh, within the page it will be processing rest of the things. Once the page is over there is another life cycle method which is at the end the life cycle method is release, release returns void. So, that way our tag interface has all these methods fine. So, tag interface has methods set page context, set parent then we have attribute methods are not in the interface they would be decided by the tag developer and then we have the get parent method it is included in the interface and we have the do start tag, the do end tag fine indicating the start and the end of the tag okay, fine and then we have the release method. So, that that is what we have in the tag interface fine. Now, you might have uh, you might be interested in using the next type of tag which is the iteration fine and the iteration tag the life cycle is very similar there is a little change here. In case of a iteration tag fine the evaluation is almost the same the life cycle is same we have the set uh, page context we have the set parent getting invoked and then we even have the uh, invocation of the setter methods for the attributes. So, all that happens, but then we have one additional method once we say uh, now when, when we say eval body include suppose it says eval body include yes it will evaluate the body content, but after the body content has been evaluated fine it invokes another life cycle the additional method which we have in the iteration tag that method is do after body. So, we have this method called do after body which does not have any parameter. So, in the life cycle it is after the do start tag after the do start tag if the do start tag returns skip body then this method would not be called it will straight away go for uh, do and tag fine, but if it is returning eval body include fine after the evaluation of the body is over it will invoke the method do after body. So, this is the method calling uh, being called now this method in order to repeat the evaluation of the body content it can return a value called eval body again. So, there is another constant called eval body again it is a constant in the iteration tag. So, the integer value returned by do after body it can be eval body again or it can be skip body if it says so if it says eval body again it keeps on repeating the evaluation of the body till this method it evaluates the body invokes a method called do after body again evaluates the body if it is returning uh, if it is returning the eval body again it just keeps on repeating the evaluation of body and this will be in a loop fine unless it says skip body. Once it says skip body it will be then uh, again going to the regular other life cycle method which is the do and tag fine and then of course at the end it has to end of the page it has to call the release method fine. So, this iteration tag is giving us the option of iterating evaluation of the body being take, uh, repeatedly happening there fine and then we have the other type of tag called the body tag fine. The third type of tag is the body tag in the body tag fine the body tag has again now in the body tag the difference from the iteration tag body tag extends from the iteration tag here also evaluation of body is done, but no the evaluation of body is not in the manner in the same way the way it is done for the iteration tag. In the iteration tag 
the body content goes if the body cont uh, is normal processed by the JSP engine. The JSP engine is just normal thing is to put it in the output. So, the body content goes in the output, but in this case in case of a body tag the we have an option whereby we can prevent the content being evaluated by directly by the JSP engine instead of uh, being evaluated by the JSP engine we can ask the JSP engine to put it in a buffer and make it available to this. So, the kind of methods which we have here if you look at the life cycle for a body tag again on the line similar to the earlier one, but yes let me just go where the differences are. So, first step was set page context, set parent, setter methods for the attributes that would always happen fine and then we have the do start tag. Do start tag now what does a do start tag return? Oh, it can return skip body, it can return eval body, uh, eval body include other than this eval body include if it says eval body include it is just like the iteration tag. If instead of saying eval body include if it if the do start tag returns eval body buffered we have uh, this constant eval body buffered which is there in the body tag. So, if it is returning eval body buffered in that case what is being done here is a body content object is created it is a buffer a body content there is a class called body content this is nothing but this is a class which extends from the JSP writer JSP writer is nothing but a buffer ok. So, this is a buffer but the idea here is this buffer content is accessible we have a method to get it as a string. So, we have this body content object being created by the engine and then it is invoking. So, after the do start tag returns a eval body buffered it would invoke the method called set body content where the object a empty buffer object is given to the uh, is made available to our tag object. And after the invocation of uh, set body content where the buffer object has been given it then asks the uh, it is again asking the tag if you want you can do some initialization on this buffer. So, maybe you put some initial part or anything. So, you can do something. So, it is calling a method called do init body. So, there is a method called do init body fine. So, those two additional methods have come in here. So, for a body can for a body tag we have two additional methods there is one additional method called uh, uh, set body content and the other method is do init body fine. So, this could be used for initial initialization purpose fine and then the evaluation of the body content would take place and then similar to the iteration tag fine a uh, similar to the iteration tag it would be invoking the method for uh, uh, do after body. But when now what is this evaluation of the iteration tag? Uh, what is this evaluation which is being done by uh, for us? The evaluation which is done would result in no it is not going to evaluate this JSP and put it in the output. Because it is saying buffered it is not going in the output it is instead put into the buffer which was given to us fine which is given to the tag in the in the set uh, in the set body content methods. So, the body content object given to us in the set body content method is then updated fine the evaluation of uh, uh, eva evaluation uh, eval body buffered results uh, is now for a body content it would result in this body being uh, put into the appended into the buffer it just gets appended into the buffer fine. So, this buffer is then uh, away and then there is an invocation of do after body. So, when the do after body is there you have the body content object available which is where the thing is appended and you can then decide what you would like to do with the content. The content is now with the tag the content was never with the tag in the iteration tag. In case of a body tag the content is available directly to the tag and then the tag can decide this tag can then decide how to use it fine and then it can it also like a iteration tag here also it needs to decide whether it would like to have this appended another time again. So, if it wants to repeatedly have it appended it that could also be done it can just return 
eval body again the do after body can just keep on repeating eval body again. So, if it says eval body again there is no output going to the output the body does not go to the output the body gets appended to the body content object and then we have this happening and unless it says uh, uh, unless it says uh, skip body only when it says skip body uh, do after body will say skip body in that case it will go to the do and tag. So, in the do and tag maybe you have the buffer ready with all the things so with so many iterations being done and then you may decide in the uh, uh, do and tag you can decide how to you would like to use the entire buffer which has been created full how you would like to do it. You, you, there, are, there are easier ways to push it just into the output whatever has been accumulated or you can work over the uh, you can work over the entire buffer which is in the body content get it as a string do whatever you like to manage manipulate it and then maybe do give it in the output on your own fine. So, you get con uh, control over the content in case of a body tag fine. So, that is what we have in the body tag fine and then of course, the similar uh, uh, life cycle at the end it would again also have a release method fine. So, that way we have got these three different kinds of a tags fine and then we have the TLD file which has to be written fine. What is to be given in the URI is nothing but the TLD file. The TLD file associates a name with the tag, the TLD file has all the its XML file associates name with the tag fine. It would even mention about what uh, uh, whether uh, this particular tag has a uh, is a uh, what kind of body content it has whether it is a empty body content or it has got some body content which is used as a JSP or whether the body content in case of a body tag you will say oh body content is tag dependent fine. In, uh, in case of a iteration tag you will say body tag is JSP fine body content uh, the kind of body content is JSP fine this is something which you mentioned in the TLD file. Uh, the TLD file thing how it is uh, you how it is to be created fine that will be covering in our uh, next module which will be about a demonstration on how to uh, use uh, how to write uh, uh, how to raise these three kinds of tags and how to create a TLD file and use them fine and uh, fine. so that way we have seen how to create uh, any custom tag can now be created fine and these tags can then be used by a web page developer fine so that way we got the uh, interfacing between uh, a web page designer and a pro Java programmer. Java programmers are tag developers. As far as where to manage these, yes, you have your tag classes, and these tag classes can be managed. You will have to put them maybe in your uh, uh, classes, make them available in your classes, or maybe you create a jar file and keep it in the lib folder. The TLD file is advised to be kept somewhere within the web INF. So, normally what we do is we create a folder called TLD and put our TLD file over there. So, when we use the at the rate tag lib fine we will say at the rate tag lib slash web INF slash TLD slash and whatever wherever we have kept our TLD file fine. So, as a tag library uh, as a tag library developer yes you are free to create all the three kinds of any of those three kinds of tags and put them fine. So, that is what we have in this module and uh, in the next module yeah we will be having the demonstration thing thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.